stay in. Go back to the positive, and we're going to set it up. So now we got a nice quick pulse going. You could hear that pulse. And that's pretty much your timer, okay? So, um, taught you guys about your 555. I wanted to talk about this one I just put up here. We're not going to work on that right now, but that one there, it's pretty special. That's your 556 CN. And pretty much one whole side is one of these chips, and the other side is another one of these chips. So basically, there you create two circuits, and you're pulsing each leg of an input that way. And wow, what a big difference. And we'll, if you see my video beforehand, the couple that I put out with that coil, that coil over there, um, I put two circuits, two pulse circuits going at it. So that's why it was going nuts with uh, my spark gap over here. Um, so yeah, so, and also you can change the resistors. Uh, like here, I got solder on some wires, put an X on it. That means I burned it out. Um, you know, these resistors there, they're pretty durable. They're the uh, 2N3055. Um, they work great, too. So uh, back to, let's see, what could we do? Let's, let's see if we're probably going to blow this circuit up. So, guys, you know, I'm going to hook up this mic over here. We're going to unplug the speakers okay and we're gonna go over here hook that up to the negative hook this up to the positive and this is how I keep blowing these chips because I'm sending back pulses and pretty much um, you know it, it's it, it happens so this is all part of experimenting so now we're gonna come back out here we're gonna connect the positive and I probably just burnt it, but we're going to let me give me a chicken stick or something because there's a lot of volts coming out of here. Let's, yep, I just, something, something. Yeah, I see smoke burn coming up. All right, but anyway, so like this, this timer chip, pretty much um, this is the low voltage one. You really want to get the one that's the CN. I think that's the IC type. So this one won't handle, you know, this backload, what we just tried to do, because I'll, I'll show you. So now we'll go back to hooking up this to the speaker. And before we had a pulse right now to prove that it's blown out, we are going to hook it back up, and it should be a steady stream of sound. All right, so that's what happens when you... You toast up a CN board. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, pretty much that's it for the day. Um, you, I taught you how to build it. You know, as uh, far as troubleshooting, you come back over. You'll, you'll go through each piece. You'll know what it does, how to work it. Here we'll look at this chip. I definitely fried the chip. It's all smoked out. Don't worry about it. They're about a dollar a piece. You can get bunches of them and teach yourself how to build a pulsating um, CN555 timer. And then uh, uh, one of my next videos we'll do, we'll do a, a bigger for the big boys timer. Um, this one's low voltage. Um, I also run in uh, off the solar panel and I run to this and it has 18 volts off my solar panel. And I could make my DC solar into AC, which would be like using a uh, inverter. Except for inverters are are come in different sizes for wattage, and they also are plugged in. So this one you don't have to plug in because you're building the the pulse circuit right into uh, uh, to the solar panel. But uh, you don't have to use solar panel. You can use six volt, twelve volt batteries. And then one more thing we'll talk about. Uh, real quick before I get off this video is this capacitor set up with this uh, coil with these little capacitors I built. This will hold up to about um, 
about a hundred thousand volts um, it, it, it alongside my my big capacitors I'm able to time this is two circuits and I can't wait to do some videos with that to show you guys uh, what that'll all do and then back to Edley Scallon's PMH well, what I like to do is uh, we're going to do some experiments. I want to show you guys that I did two coils, um, basically in front of the wheel. And when you turn the wheel, each time one of these north or south poles comes in front of the metal prongs, it's going to send a positive charge out one end of this coil, a negative charge out the other end of this coil. And I think what Ed Leah Scallon was doing, I think he was crashing two pulses together and on the back side of these coils is where he had anti-gravity because it would go to the tripods and when those two coils crashed or those two atoms crashed into each other they went to the tripods and those cables that came down from the tripods that went into the stone neutralized the stone from its uh from its gravity pull down and it gave it anti-gravity effects. So I think the PMH has a lot to do with um, anti-gravity because where else do you get the perfect sine wave of, of a square sawtooth, a, a loop, all together in, in one machine. So this machine is very special and we're going to go over some of the the, the sine waves that um, that this machine's capable of producing because it definitely has things that um, other machines that don't have you know um, you know the important thing is 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 the wave shape you know and and pretty much um, it, it's the magnitude of, of of what it's able to do with three waves at one time. And there's nothing out there like it that has three waves uh, coming out through the wire at one time. And we'll show that up on my uh, oscilloscope. But anyway, you guys have a good day. Thanks for uh, watching my videos. Leave some comments. Um, sorry about my last video with, you know, I had all that spark going over here. Uh, it definitely was hard to talk around it. So I'll delete that sometime in the near future. And we'll talk about that cir double circuit that I built and uh, the plasma that was coming out of it. It was pretty interesting stuff. You guys have a great day.